Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret number 9, focusing on the E note. Get ready and some coffee. You know, I'm jealous of those that can use their body parts to pick the guitar. I'm not jealous, I'm envious. But for pick addicts like me, the old adage applies. It's an addiction. The physical and psychological need is very real. You can pick your guitar and you can pick your nose. But you can't pick your guitar with your nose. Or your nose with the guitar. Or the guitar with your fingers. Well, you, you can do that last one. But for me, picking with my fingers feels like I might as well be picking with my nose. These are terrible. It's like trying to smoke a chicken bone. <laughs> Which is also doable, I guess. But it doesn't seem very practical. Or safe. Um, it doesn't seem very safe. Like considering, considering if a string breaks while you're picking with your nose, it could poke your eye out. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. So, so if you do try picking nose style, you may want to wear glasses. Where's your glasses? Which I do wear, but, but not because I pick the guitar with my nose. I wear them because I can't see. Anyways. I feel like I'm rambling now, so let's just, let's just get into it. No fill, not into our nose, I, I mean into the guitar, using a pick, or at least I'm going to use a pick. You can use whatever you want, just don't sue me if something goes like horribly wrong, okay? Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go to the first tab to get that overall overview, noting we've been looking at the C major scale and its related modes. We started looking at them in open position, which we defined as frets 0 through 3, noting that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. Funnest way to map out the notes in open position is to create the chords from the scale we're working in, starting with the one chord, for us that being the C major chord, mapping it out in open position, discussing it in detail. We then went to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, mapped it out and discussed it in detail. Five chord the same, then to the two chord because it has a minor chord construction, then the three chord the same, the six chord the same, and the seven chord which has a diminished chord construction. If we were to map out all the chords we constructed, and the notes within them in open position, we would be mapping out, in essence, the C major scale and the related modes, which would look something like this, the blue notes in open position. We then move to position five, learning it not first with chord shapes, but rather with scale shapes, pentatonic and major scale shapes that we can link to the chords that we learned in open position. We discussed this shape in relation to every note within our scale that we're focused on. We then moved up to the next shape, which is gonna be starting on fret number seven, did a similar process, discussed the pentatonic major scale, and then focused on every note in the scale. And then we're now looking at the next shape up, which is of course starting on uh, the ninth fret, which we could call, I would call the third position, or you might call it a D-shaped position. We discussed the pentatonic, the major scale, and now we're looking at each note uh, in relation to these shapes. Quick recap of the color scheme that we have thus far, because it looks chaotic, I know, but we note that this is the fretboard. This E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. And we're imagining that the first thing we lay down underneath all of this is all seven notes out of the 12 note musical alphabet that are in blue on the bottom. So everything that has a color in it has blue on the bottom. And then we put on top of it the five note pentatonic, noting that the pentatonic is in green, so it lays on top of the blue, but the pentatonic five note scale only fits perfectly into the, the modes of the 
C major or the major mode and its relative minor or Aeolian mode. And we're basically now looking at the three note, which uh, if we were to focus on that note as the focal point, means we would basically be playing in Phrygian. And that means that when we look at the three notes that we construct, we do make a minor chord construction, but it doesn't fit perfectly into the pentatonic scale because we have these two notes in our major scale that we're using to construct these chords. And we can see that this B, for example, is going to be a fairly crucial note when we construct the chord from the three note of the C major scale. So if you're thinking in terms of pentatonics, just realize that we had to add uh, the, the, the B in order to make that yellow. So now we've mapped out the major notes we're focused on, the green being the first, the third being the red, and then the yellow being the fifth of the E minor that we're taking a look at. Then we have these uh, brackets, which are representing us breaking out the fretboard into chunks so that we can play everything, hopefully, in horizontal positions uh, or in vertical positions as opposed to horizontally. And we can name those shapes. So let's go through those quickly here. We, we have the first shape. I'll pull out the trusty guitar where we base, where we said that we had, we can name that shape the uh, shape number four. We can just number it. I typically uh, will do that. You can also call it a C shape. Now, why would it be a C shape? We're looking at the E minor chord that's constructed from the C major scale. And you could call that a Phrygian mode that we're looking at. But usually when we name the shapes, we name them based on the related major. So in this case, we're looking at the C major. And if I build a C chord, you get a C shape. That C shape will fit into multiple positions if we're talking about a seven note major scale, but only one unique of those positions if we're talking about a five note pentatonic scale. So that's why we can, if we keep our mind straight on what we're talking about, we can use that shape uh, of the of the of the chord to name the scale position but we're focused here on the e so with regards uh, to the e then we'd have like an e minor shape which would look something like this that's what these blue brackets are doing so in this bracketed area we've got then the e minor shape which would be the open e here this uh, b this e and then these three i know that blue is a little bit hard to see but that's that's what we're looking at here now it's on the outside the overlap between this blue and the next blue is where we get on the inside leaning forward those will be on the inside so and then with this purple shape then is what we can call i would call it shape number five we can also call it an a shape why is it an a shape because if we look back at the c the related major and pivot around that note we get an a shape leaning forward with which most people see like as the as the notes on this side of the a shape so it'd be this c and then leaning forward to those three but we're not looking at the a right now we're trying to figure out the e's right because we're on an e minor so here's uh the e minor here if i was to lean that forward we get this uh so here's the e up top here's the e right here so there's the octave here's the e and then we get basically a D uh, shape that we get down here, which looks like this. Now that, so, so that's this shape, so it's inside of the blue. And then now it's on the outside as we pivot to this shape here and here. You might recognize that shape uh, more easily fingering it like this, because that's how we play it. It's a, it's a D, you might call it a D shaped or D minor shaped. E minor chord. All right, so that's going to be this position. And then we move from that position to this position. There's only five positions, so we're going back to position one. It's typical to call this one, you know, position one, or you might call it a G shaped position. And that's because if I go back to the C, the C is right there in that position, and I can build this chord from it that looks like that. Or if I looked at this shape, it would be a G shape. So it'd be a G shaped C. Uh, major if I looked at it from the perspective of, of a of a C but again we're looking at the the E's here so the E 
If I go back to the purple shape, you can see I'm kind of grabbing uh, this E at the bottom with my pinky. And so if I, if I lean that forward, then I've got my E right here and I can basically make this shape with it. So that's gonna be boom, 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 these three notes. And then I can also basically lean up to this E right here. So this shape, so this boom, 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 is what you might call a, a like a C minor shaped E minor chord because it would be like a C would be right here and you drop the third if it was a major and then you drop the third a half step and there's the the minor and then this is kind of like the bottom of that shape so you can see these two are kind of linked together this little triangle and then you can reach your pinky up this way uh, instead grabbing it up there so there's that one and then we go from the red to the or position one to position number two, which again, we could call an E-shaped. Why would it be an e shape? Because if we looked at the related major scale and we built a chord shape from it, it would be up here. Now we're pivoting around that C and it would look like that, which would be our normal bar chord if we were pivoting around this C. Boom, uh, the fifth, duh, 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 and so on. So it would look like this, this, E major bar chord would be up here, up, up there, and so that would be that. But again, we're looking at not the C, we're looking at the E. And with the E, we were pivoting around this shape, so this E right here. So if I pivot around that one, we get our most one of our most common bar chords starting on that second from the top string, which is an A minor, you might call it an A minor shaped uh, a minor shaped E minor, right? Because if it was an A minor, it would look like this in open position. That would be an A minor, but if I move it up here and bar that off, we have uh, the E uh, minor. And so there's that shape. And then we go from two to three. And so the three, you might call it a D shape. This is where, where, where we are focused right now. Because if I go back to the C and I say, there's the, there's the C right there. I can grab this C and this dude dude, or you can see this little triangle down here. That's the D shaped C major. But again, we're looking at the uh, E. So with the E, we could say, we could see we're grabbing it up top. So one way we can play it is basically this way, this E boom, boom, boom. And you'd call that possibly a G shaped or a G minor shape if you want to call it G minor shaped E minor chord and that one this one's a little bit tricky to see the minors oftentimes are a little bit harder to see when you're trying to compare these shapes as you move them up to like open position because sometimes we don't play all of the same shapes like an open position but you can see like if I was to play this shape as a G like this and if it was a G like this, then I would take the half part of that shape if it was a major, which would look like this, boom, boom. And then I'm going to drop the third. So the third would be right there. And I'm going to convert it from a major to a minor. And that's one way you might say, okay, yeah, I get why it's called maybe a G shaped or a G minor shaped E minor chord. It's because it's the, the one, uh, three and the five. So that's the idea. We're going to be focusing now on this shape, which I, again, I would call shape number three or a D shaped position. Although we're not focused on the D shape because we're playing around uh, that three chord. So just to remember how we might do that, if I was in open position here and I wanted to practice playing around the E, then I could just throw the E in the mix playing in like a C major, C major, A minor, and then throwing like the E minor back to the C major and then try to make the C the tonic, but I'm playing, but I'm throwing that minor in. But if I want to practice in the E minor, you could like switch, of course, to an E minor scale. But what we're trying to do here is practice the chord while still using the same scale, which that's a different, which will help us kind of practice going into the mode of the Phrygian and it'll also get us an idea of a better idea of one shape that we can map out all the way across the fretboard. So if I want to do that, I want to make then this uh, this the tonic. 
So now I'm gonna build like an E minor. We'll do that in open position. And then I can just start and stop on the E so I can practice more my E minor as opposed to just throwing it in with the major. So here's an E minor. Okay, so then it's usually not too difficult to make the E the tonic. It's a pretty common, uh, it's a pretty common mode, the Phrygian. So in other words, to resolve, to kind of make it sound like the center, not too difficult, but we can always use our trick to say, hey, look, what's the fifth of it? The fifth is a B. So here's a B right there. And normally the B in our, if I was to construct off a B, it would be that funny diminished. Which is a chord, which is a chord shape that leads back possibly to the one fairly well. We would like to have something that leads back to the back to the E. So I can kind of cheat and say, well, why don't I take this B and I'll make a major out of it? So that would be like an it would be an A shape, you know, bar chord in this position. And that kind of leads back. So then we can kind of we can kind of cheat by doing that, right? So I can say, hey, look, when I'm trying to go back to the E to make it resolve, maybe I throw in a B major, even though it's outside of our of our uh, scale. We're stepping in the lava. We're hitting some of those toxic white notes, getting some lava on us. But once we resolve, we'll go. Oh, I see why we stepped in the lava. Okay, so we're gonna say, here's an E minor. Here's a, a, a C, A minor, and then if I go back home, see how that sounds maybe a little bit off, but when we resolve it to the, to the E minor, then it should work. So that's a little you know, trick that we can basically pull in to try to make that the tonic, which is, which is common even if you were to skip, by the way, to an E minor scale. We don't have that resolve back like we do with the majors so that's a common thing you can do with the minors just in general even if you went to the e minor scale instead of playing around the phrygian then you'd have a similar technique possibly all right so so now if we go if we bring this up to this area this to our green area our strategies could be that we play around again we're going to kind of play around the three which means we're we're going to make it the tonic meaning we're basically playing in like a phrygian but instead of renumbering the system to call it the one, which is what we would do modally, which we'll talk more about later, we're going to keep it as the three and just say, hey, look, I'm just doing all the same stuff, but I'm going to make that the tonic by starting and stopping on it. We can then practice in this, in this position by basically playing all the chords in this position. So all chords, all notes should be able to be played in any, in, in, within the one to five fret kind of shape positions we have here. That's the beauty of the guitar. Um, however, we of course are only mapping out one chord at a time in a particular shape. So although we've gone over the different shapes, you might not be completely comfortable making all the switches in this shape. We might practice that more later, but we'll just touch on that now. Another technique that you might use is of course, jumping to where you know. So we probably know best the a, at least a few chord shapes better in open position. So we could try to jump from open position up to this position so that we can practice noodling around and playing in this position while also surrounding it with things we know in open position, realizing that as we jump, we can also play open strings because we're in the key of C in the related mode or the Phrygian and all the open strings are in the chord that we're working on. Uh, which is nice. We can also then, okay, let's, we can also practice blending from the prior shape to this shape so we can play more smoothly horizontally, possibly focusing in on particular fingers that we can move from one shape to the other so we can see the lines as we're blending the shapes uh, together. So we can kind of blend them together in our mind and find ways that we can move horizontally. And then of course we can keep going back to the, the previous shape and find lines that will move us from the prior shapes into the current shapes so that we can kind of more seamlessly move horizontally up between our shapes, which can give, which can give us different sounds 
uh, and different lines as we move up. So that's going to be the general idea. Let's first just play through the shape. And I'll do this like we did before. Remember, the shape kind of starts here on a D, but we're not gonna, we don't want to start on the D right now because I want to sound it like, I want to make it sound like we're playing around the E, which means I want to make it sound Phrygian-ish. So, uh, so we could make this the one, which is what, what, you, what you would normally do if you're playing modally, but I'm going to keep it as the three. It's a little bit wonky to kind of count up with the three, but I think it's actually good practice even if you're going to switch to the mode. So I'm going to go from three to three. So I'm going to take this number, I'm going to take this, and I'll put it right here. We're going to start on that E, da -da, and then we're going to move up to, uh, to this E. And I'll just count starting on three. So there's our E. That is the octave, of course, which is another thing to point out here. This heavy E is good, right? So it sounds a little funny because it ha if I play it with the something underneath it, because we're, we're pretty far up in terms of uh, the distance of tonality of this low low note versus the higher notes up here. But that that heavy E, you can always put that in place and that should be okay too. So something to keep in mind uh, as we go. All right, so we're gonna say this is gonna be the two uh, or the three, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, or one, two, three. So now I'm on this E down here. Boom. And then I'm going to play up to this E starting on the three again. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three. So now I'm on this E. I'm going to finish the shape by just saying three, four, three. That brings me back to this three again. Then I can walk it back the other way. So we can say three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So that brings me to this E. And then I'm going to walk that back to this E. So I'm going to say this is going to be three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And so now I'm on this three. I'm going to say three, two, three. And so there we have, so we can kind of practice the same scale. Notice it's different though, right? Practicing the scale starting and stopping on the D is a different exercise than starting and stopping on the E. You're going to really get that shape in your mind if you, do, if you start and stop on all the modalities. But you'll also be able to kind of hopefully switch between the modes if you practice, you know, starting on stopping on different modes, which I'm practicing too. I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm, a, I'm an accountant here. I'm, I'm but, I, but, you know, I'm practicing these things. So here, this is what I'm doing. So the next thing we can look at is we can, we can see the, the shapes that are in here. So you'll recall that we had before a, we called this a uh, G minor shaped E minor, right? Because this is the one, three, five. So it's a little bit hard to grab that one because you got to use your pinky typically. Uh, and it's a G shape because this would be the top part of a G shape if it was a G major. And then you'd have these three. And then down here, you'd be, right? That would be like this shape, but then barring off this stuff. And then you've, you're flattening the third to get the minor. That's why you might call it a G <laughs> minor shaped E minor. Okay. So you've got, you've got those three. You can also play this way. So this one is going to be the, the, it's inverted. The E's on the bottom now. So you've got, uh, and that's kind of connected to this shape back here. Which is a little outside of our, of our, sh of our shapes, but that's probably the most common. That's like a really comfortable shape right there. And then we, and so, but we can convert that to this. That's in our shape, so we have that. And then the bottom of that shape is back here. So we've got these three. Da -da -da. So we've got the, the, those three, 
which is a high pitched and one and somewhat inverted again. It is totally inverted because the E's on on the bottom. You could you could when I play this. I've been experimenting with with reaching up to uh, the E, like right there. Oops, right there. So that way you 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 lose the third, but you get like two E's in it. See, so, see, so, and you get this heavier E. Uh, basically on top so there's basically that one but I think the major ones in this shape for me is usually going whoops back to this this shape and then this shape which ties into this shape which is kind of crossing over the border uh, of the two okay just to touch on the chords that we've learned in this position now again we've only mapped out one chord that's why i don't want to spend a lot of time doing this but just realize that if you look at the at the c we looked at all the majors right so if if so what we can play together with this is we said the c's right there whenever i see the c i know that one the one four five is going to be uh the one four five are the majors so and that's in an l shape so here's the C, the, so the C, uh, the, the F, and then the G. So this C was this D-shaped C. That's what the shape is kind of named after. That would be this C, and then boom, boom. Or you can play just these up top. Right, but you're probably more likely to grab that one right there. And then under, underneath it, we've got the F. And the F is the one that you can you can play you can reach up top this way. So there's the F, and then you've got the uh, G, which is an A-shaped G. So you can play that's our. So you can play that one, and then we also did the D minor. So the D is up top. So that's the full bar chord. You can play it like that. It's kind of difficult to bar sometimes, so you can play it like this. So those are the, those are going to be the major shapes that we've looked at thus far. Well, the major and minor shape that we looked at thus far. We also noted that that B is something that we can use to basically resolve back home when we're playing around the E, which is basically like a Phrygian because the B is the fifth. So even though it's a little bit outside of our scale shape, when we're going back home in this position, we can take that and build a major chord, which would basically be a uh, D-shaped, a D-shaped B major uh, chord, and you can use that possibly to go back home to the E, the e minor. Use that as a resolve. Now again since we're only mapping out one chord at a time up top and we probably know the open uh, positions better let's try to use our jumping strategy so that we can just kind of start to play around the e up top as it fits inside of what we already know to, in terms of scale structure and we can use our open uh, chords over here so let's jump up to like this e we're going to jump up to this e Remembering that that E also, I can play the open E, and then that's the octave uh, of the E up top. So if I'm around here, I know that I have my shape that I can play like this. That's great. But then I have to play this with my pinky, which is kind of a pain. So I know that the, that the heart of that sound is the one and the three. So, so I could basically get all I really need. I don't really need the fifth to get the flavor of the E. I can play it like this. And that would be fine. I can also play like this and I don't put my pinky down. And I play that open E, which is gonna give you a kind of funky sound because this is a, an, a different octave, but you still have everything you need because now you're playing this E back here with the third uh, and the fifth. Also up top, if I was to, if I was to noodle around with this E, I can see I have this basically box right here. So I might be jumping to the E and then playing back. And then I could slide forward to that F. And then pass 
possibly reach down there. Now, note one of the things that makes a Phrygian sound Phrygian-ish to me is the fact that the, the second note is a half step up. So sometimes I, I might actually move up this way so I can really kind of hammer on that F <laughs> right there. It sound Phrygian to me sounds kind of heavier oftentimes possibly just because I'm playing on a guitar which has that heavy E string uh, on it so if you're playing like rock and roll or metal or something like that you might the Phrygian might be something to kind of play around with so in any case uh, let's let's try to say if I'm playing an open position here and I was just to play an E minor an E minor I might just say E sometimes but if I was playing an E minor then I can jump up here and then back, jumping back up. Back, so I'm jumping up. See, I'm hammering on to that. So here's an E minor, throwing a C in there. Back to an E minor. Sounds a little out of place, but resolving back to the E minor. So we can we can noodle around that one, and then I could say, okay, well, what if I what if I look at maybe this E right here and see what I can jump to from there? So we had this E, and so now I'm going to be down here on uh, this E. So within here, we're going to say, okay, well, above it, I've got my uh, my B above it, and then I've got this little shape, of course, which is my, that B and then the G could give me, give me my chord. So that's going to be here. So if I, so if I'm down on this shape, I might end it with that. I also know that behind that, it's outside of my shape, but it's a common structure to pick this one up because that gives me kind of like my A shape which is right here your A shape if I moved it up this way and then I can also reach my pinky up to pick that one although that's uncomfortable so you're probably going to do either this or move to that and then once you're there you might move from here to that right so you're going here here. Those are three ways to kind of play this way, right? Up this kind of angle, the uh, E minor from that shape. So, so we have that. And then if I'm down in, if I'm in here, I have double stops. I've got double stop, double stop, double stop up top. So I know I can play this whole little box right there. I can play that up, so if I'm on, and I also know that, uh, I also know, well, hold on, I was the wrong spot. I also know that these, this whole column, column, uh, this column and this column, in the 10th and the 12th, that whole thing is good, so I could, you know, bar off when I'm here and I'm here. So I could say, okay, if I'm double stop to here, but here I can play the whole thing here. I can play the whole thing. All right, 
So let's say let's say we work that into it. Try to see that note. So I'm gonna go boom. There's my hammer on again from the E to the F. Now I'm going back up to this high one that we were playing before, the, the G minor shaped E minor. Then maybe I go to a C, E, double stop, double stop, double stop. Okay, so then we can say, okay, what about this one? We can say there's an E up top here. Oh, no, I messed up again. We have an E that's up top there. So if I jump to that one, again, I have my open E, and there's the octave. So that's kind of interesting because you can actually play this one. So it's not, usually when you play this position, you're playing like these three, which gives you your E minor, but it's inverted. So one way you can not have it inverted, have the E be the lowest one, or at least lower, is to play these two. Which is kind of interesting. I don't normally do that, uh, but I kind of like the idea. So... And so I have that, and then I've got this whole space down here, which we can see, we've seen multiple times in the prior ones, that it's kind of the inverse of this one. You got the two shapes that connected here, the box, and then the two outside here, it's this way. So, so when I'm playing up top, I can go, when I'm playing down here, so we're playing it that way. So if I start on that E, I could play it those together and then maybe that double stop double stop double stop and I know this whole bar is good So let's say we're in an E, e over here, E minor, and then I'm going to jump up to this E. E. And then I can do my hammer on thing again with this E. So I'm just going from this E to that F. Sounds kind of. Up, double stop, ringing out that opening. C, A minor, F major, E. So now I just kind of walked it up to this one, E up top. C, 
minor. So anyways, you can kind of jump, we can jump around between those. So the next thing we could do is say, okay, well, what if I was trying to blend the shapes together to have a more smooth transition? So if I want to move to that E, I could say, okay, let's try to connect that to the prior shape. So here's the green shape. If I, if I go back to the prior shape, then I can say, well, there's an E like right here. And that's part of, that's part of basically this, this E shape right here, right? So if I'm in uh, this shape, that's my A kind of shape. So I have, meaning this is my A minor shape moved up here. So this is an A minor shaped E minor chord. And so, so I can use that and then possibly noodle up this area maybe to go up to this E up top. So I can say, okay, I'm gonna look at my pointer. So you don't always have to look at the pointer. Notice down here, you could say, here are my two fingers right there which naturally fit into these double stops. So maybe that would be an interesting, just a little bit different place to start. You might say, okay, I've got, you know, these two fingers right here. What if I move them up, boom, boom. So that, you know, we, fits perfectly into this shape. So you can play this shape and then I'm gonna double stop. Moving up into this shape and then pause. walked down to basically that shape. So that would make that would make sense with something other than your pointer, right? So you might do something first up top. I might say first I'm going to reach from here to like to up top to here to this G and then maybe I'll go back to these two fingers and then move them up in some way, right? So I can go like try to find something okay and then I, I could go with my pointer in this position so okay it's like okay my pointers right there so if I take that one then of course I could noodle around this box up top and then and then possibly finish off on that E so if I was to say okay if I'm here I've got my hammer on to that F and then I can move around this box The one, there's the the one and the three up here, right? And we could take this shape here and try to find my way down to this bottom E instead, and then see if we can get down to basically this E. So I'm going to say, there's my here's my shape. There's the top E. Here's the octave that my pinky's on. So I could try to get my ring my pointer to that pinky position. So I just basically maneuvered my pinky up, uh, my, my ring finger up to where the pinky was, and now I'm up in here. So then I could say, all right, what if I move back from this position, position one, and we move back into position, uh, position two, back into position one, I should say. So now that E's the pivot point. If I lean back from that E, I've got this shape, which is basically a C shape. We might also focus on this E down here. So this would be like a C minor shaped E minor chord. That's a little bit difficult to grab for a lot of people. So I'm grabbing this, this, and this. A lot of people might start with this shape here, which is this little triangle, boom, boom, boom. But the E here is, is now uh, on the bottom, so it's inverted. 
So you can convert this triangle to up here. So if we're there, then I can say, okay, well now my, my ring finger, whichever way I play it, is right there. So it's right there. And I, move, I can move that into my most familiar shape, which is this one, and then turn this one around into my A shape, and then basically maneuver that one from there. So if, I, for, so if, my, if my, not my ring finger, my pointer finger uh, is here, I'm playing this. I know I can walk this B and up to that C. There's my finger. I can walk that up to there easily. I might do something like this play a three note one, which is basically an A minor, but I'm not really thinking chords too much. I'm trying to get my finger up to this one because that's where I'm going to pivot around on my pointer finger. So now I'm on my pointer fingers here and I can reverse that forward. So now I'm there and now I have my same problem where I just took the top route and brought it back up to this one. So we could take that same that same thing and go the bottom route, right? I could say, well, instead of pivoting up to this E, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna come down to this area maybe and see if I can reach up to this E like this way with that A-shaped E, and then maybe go down to this one, right? So I can say, okay, what if I'm if I'm on this shape right here, here's my pointer again. I could go into here, and now I'm in this area, so I can kind of noodle around this area where I have my ham I have my hammer on. I'm on the E now. So now I've brought my finger up to basically uh, that C uh, right there. And so then uh, within that position, we might... S so now I've basically brought my finger up into this, uh, this position, which is our like kind of minor shaped, an A minor shape, which is, which is a nice position because that, cause that you can, you can uh, convert that. Hopefully I got that right. Let me <laughs> let's bring it back to the next shape. We're running long on time. We're gonna say there's there's this shape. So that was that E right there that we focused on with position one. If we lean back to the next shape, then we have this E. So we can say, all right, that E, if I if I go back to this one, this is an open position. There's the E right there. The octave is right there. So there's my E. If I was to build a minor chord, it would look like that, which is a D-shaped. So, so now we've got boom. So this one to that purple, to here, to here, and to here. That's my D shape, uh, E minor. But it might be a little bit hard to reach that one because of this this finger right there. So you might play it like this way. Just play these three. Play those three notes and that can kind of help you to lead up your finger your your lead finger then is on on this one now so the two fingers I can use to move up might be this finger with this E which is now this finger and I can move that up in position playing around again this kind of position so I might lead with that one going and so now I'm in this position So now I've got this A again. And now I've basically pivoted around this E up top. So now I'm going around this E up top again, and that puts us into our same uh, position up top, which I could take the high, the high road on it. that and then let's just do the whole thing 
So let's say that we are in open position. So we have the E, you know, the, the full E like this. Now some play, people play the E minor different ways. You might play the E minor like this, in which case your pointer finger is gonna be on that B. So, so, or you might play it like this. So if, you, if your pointer, these two are on that position now. So I could move these two up together and say, could I do some double stops from here to here to here, right? I can go all the way up uh, on that position. So I might play this whole thing, double stop these two. And then I'm, there's that E right there, so. That's actually an, an E minor right there. You don't have to play it in that order too. I can go. Right, so that's kind of fun to do. I can play I can move just one of these fingers. So there's an E minor leaning back uh, this way, and then I can lean it forward that way so there we have that so so we can find our lines obviously you can do the same thing going back and forwards I'm kind of focusing on going forwards but clearly you want to go back the other way too which would be great let me just one other thing just again with these minors I find enjoyable ringing out that open minor uh, so and just letting that ring out as you move up the guitar, which is something you can do. And so if you put your cursor, um, if you put your finger, or cursor too maybe, on uh, the this B, then I can alter between an open E. So now I'm altering between an open E and that B, and then I can also grab that G, which means I'm basically playing the three notes but altering between them between the E and the G. So I can do that shuffle pattern. I could take my finger off too, which reveals the A, put it back on. So shuffle pattern. I can also grab the one behind it, even though it's white, because that's like the blue note if it was an E minor scale, but I think it works in Phrygian too. I can kind of play that up so I can play every note as I go up here then I'm gonna go here playing the open E D and then the A and then I'm gonna to move to here play the open E the B uh, and then go to here play the open E the F and the C and then go to here and play the open oop, the open play the open E the F and then the D and then I'll go to here and I'll play the open E and then to the E here and then basically finish it off right so I'm gonna say all right let's, if I started back here we could play like I could just follow this string up and just play what I can play reaching from that string right so I can just go uh, and then I'm just moving from that B to the C, and I can see from there, open E in the C, I'm reaching up to the A above it, and then back, and then I'm going to move up to the D, move, reaching up to the E, to the B, open, and then back to the E right here, so now I'm on the E, so here it's fun to do, so you got that note, and the third, and then there's the double E. So that's that kind of in the middle. You get the double E, which gives you that heavy sound. And then I can go up to the F. And then I can go up to the G. And we can go up to the G. Kind of 
close it up there and you can go back, right? So if I was to do that, we can... Continue going. You can also f follow this top string kind of back as well, and then alter between the open the open strings so when you're when you're going back this way so that's just just messing with that open string and then you can let the a ring out as well sometimes right and that will always give you that bass line because, and so that is nice because that gives you the ability to play other things and always return to that bass line to give you that bass to that bass E. Mm -hmm. 